Two years ago, we began a long-term research project to better understand design thinking, how practitioners incorporate it into their everyday work and its effect on project outcomes. Based on our conversations with these practitioners, specifically those who have positively influenced design thinking practices in their teams and organizations, we found that design thinking practitioners share roughly the same learning journey, despite different backgrounds and contexts. So let's unpack what this journey looks like. There are four phases in the design thinking learner's journey, newcomer, adopter, leader, and grandmaster. As practitioners progress through these stages, their mastery increases in a nonlinear fashion, experiencing fluctuations due especially to a lack of self-confidence. Now note that mastery is a combination of competence and confidence. Both are required to effectively use design thinking. So let's jump in. Phase one is a newcomer. This is the first phase in the learning journey. Individuals in this stage have been introduced to design thinking, but have limited experience with it. Newcomers' knowledge is minimal. They have a surface level understanding of design thinking, often rooted in the same definition they received during their first exposure. They may be able to provide a definition, but are not familiar with the details of a framework or its value. Newcomers are unaware of their design thinking and competence. They don't know what they don't know. The goal of newcomers is to understand the basics, what design thinking is and why it's useful. This can be done through browsing articles, reading books, or participating in a workshop. Now, as an educator, focus on communicating the potential value of design thinking and motivate the newcomer to pursue learning and then make time for it. Phase two, we call the adopter. Individuals at this stage have adopted design thinking and begun to practice it. They may have had some ups and downs in their limited experience with design thinking. It's common for adopters to waffle between confidence and self-doubt and to feel both confused and successful at the same time. Successful adopters see design thinking relevant to their work or life and thus make a commitment to continued learning. Adopters tend to practice design thinking by the book. They rely heavily on the prescribed, branded versions of design thinking provided by their institution, their company, or a reputable external organization. Adopters encounter a lot of failure. Wrong activity at the wrong time, lack of support from others, jumping to conclusions. For educators of adopters, they still need training wheels. Focus on hands-on practice and relevance to their everyday work. Our third phase of the learner's journey is leader. Leaders are in the proficiency stage of design thinking. They can articulate design thinking succinctly to others and their confidence grows steadily with very generally positive experiences and continued exposure. Leaders are able to consistently and somewhat adaptively perform design thinking activities without thinking about them and even advocate for collaborative design thinking activities. The goal should be to empower leaders to transition into the role of design thinking teachers and facilitators. Promoting reflection in this stage is key to helping leaders continue to grow and progress to grandmaster, which leads me to our last phase, grandmasters. Practitioners at this stage have not only become teachers of design thinking, but create new ways of applying it, thinking about it, even adding to it. The practice of design thinking is so embodied in their behavior, they seldom have to think about applying it. Grandmasters view of design thinking as a flexible, dynamic toolkit. They don't stick to prescribed or branded versions of design thinking and more often pool tools or activities from other realms, like service design or business strategy. Grandmaster's defining characteristic is the ability to critically reflect on their practice. This reflection enables them to judge what's useful and potentially depart from the traditional ways and activities of design thinking. This design thinking learning journey is a high level distilled representation of the most common learning phases observed in our research. Learning and teaching design thinking is messy. 
Not all experiences will fit squarely into this model. Using this journey can help learners gain insight and awareness into the greater journey and goals, while helping educators successfully execute the design thinking learning experience they aim to create.